find in this video, I'm going to go through how to identify some of your favorite loops in the loop browser. I've opened up a new soundtrack project and I'm going to go to my loop browser in the upper right. It's this music note icon here. When you open up your loop browser, you can sort them by instrument type or by genre. I would suggest going by instrument type. So those categories would be beats and drums. Those would be like percussion type things, drum beats. Uh, I would kind of sort of see those as the same category. Uh, bass, piano, guitar, and synths. So let's say you were checking out guitar loops. You could click that category and then try to focus on the items that are free. You don't want to avoid the ones that say music makers because those are a part of the uh, paid subscription and we don't want to use that. We're just using the free ones. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here and let's say I'm checking this guy out. I hit the play button. And if it's a loop I like, I'm going to mark it with the heart icon. That identifies my favorites. And so when I'm searching later, I can click on that, uh, go back here, I'll click on the guitar button, and I'll narrow it down to favorites. So it gives me a chance to check out kind of a palette of the loops that are available, and I can identify just my uh, favorite loops. I'm going to go ahead and close that out and turn off favorites for a moment. So now I'm back to that uh, larger list. Um, the other thing I can do is search for some terms. So like, for example, saxophone, that's not on this list, but there are saxophone loops in there. You can just search for saxophone. And then you can see there's some loops in here. A few of them are free. So let's say I want to check out this guy. Give that a moment to move. And again, if that's a loop I like, I'll mark it with a favorite. So as I'm searching for loops, oh, there's no button, right? But I can just go right to my favorites, and there I can see that saxophone lick right in there. When I want to identify the name of the loop, it's really important to identify the exact name of the loop. So when I'm going to you know, write down for my discussion post what my two favorite guitar loops were, I would write down exactly Corazon Flamenco Guitar 2 and Flag Guitar Loop 1 so that if uh, one, of the, one of your peers in the class wants to search for that loop, they can just type in here, I'll type in flag guitar loop one, flag guitar loop one, and it pops right up. So that's an easy way to find those loops, and then if your peer en ends up liking it, they can mark it as favorites, and it will appear uh, in their uh, uh, loop browser as well, right? and give them another bunch of loops to check out, because there's so many loops to check out uh, and I found one of the best ways for me to kind of learn the loops that are available in Soundtrap or GarageBand is by uh, having students, you know, locate their favorites. And then I find some loops that I thought were really cool, too. And before you know it, we're all finding really sweet loops and making even better music out of those loops.